but yeah. Okay. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Potomac Curling Club for the 14th annual Cherry Blossom Bond Spiel, 2.45 p.m. We're on a few minutes late, but we're pretty close to on time. Draw, this is actually the first round of the Akibono event, or the C event, if for those of you who don't speak Japanese. Uh, these are losers out games, unfortunately. Our feature game today, here on Sheet B, is the Mean Curls, being skipped by Ken Defloff, Vice Justin Stachnik, second Andrew Schauer, and lead Megan Choi, who is getting ready to throw her first stone right now. They come from the Hollywood Curling Club, all the way out from California. They came all the way out here for this tournament. They're gonna be facing a home team, Team Shirk, Skipped by George Shirk, the vice is Jason Fontaine, second Adam Cap, and the lead is Chad Shulkin. The first stone is underway, and we'll be here calling all the action for you. That's right, Alan. First stone from Megan here on the way. Center guard. So as you can see, uh, Team Hollywood has the red stones, Shirk has the yellow. And actually, um, I have it on good authority that the lead for Team Shirk at the moment is not Chad Shulkin, unless he has seriously dyed his hair. Uh, <laughs> Bill McDonald. That looks much more likely to be Bill McDonald subbing in for this game. One of the advantages of being a home team is you can do that sort of thing. And you actually know who the people are. Yes, exactly. So Bill throwing his first lead stone right now. Looks like it's going to be a pretty 2-3 guard up top. Can you hit the right on the center. Okay. So uh, there are three other games going on here and we're uh, working on getting information about those as we speak. We'll bring you up to date on those as events warrant. The, uh, all of these games, as we were saying, this is the first round of the Akibono event. The losers of this will be eliminated from the competition, uh, unfortunately. But you know, it's Saturday afternoon, that kind of thing happens. The winners of these games will be advancing to the quarterfinals this evening at either 7.45 or 10.15 p.m., depending on exactly which, which leg of the draw they're in. Over on sheet A, we have, we're here for a curl time from the Dallas-Fort Worth Curling Club. Uh, Carol Hotra, Kate Sumrau, Michelle Ford, and Mickey Miller curling against Team Temple from Pittsburgh. Jackie Temple, Eric McManus, Robert Sir, and Megan Fay. They're on sheet A. We're not 100% sure which team is which. Actually, I do know because I see sure on the back of his shirt. Uh, so that means that Team Temple is in yellow. Yes, Adam. Yes. Over on sheet C, we have Jay Hatra. I do believe they're related. Uh, skipping the Pretzels and Prost team, also from Dallas-Fort Worth with Ryan Bieber, Kevin Ford, and Zach Elwin, curling against a team uh, half Potomac, half uh, New York City Brooklyn curling club. Yes, cur Brooklyn curling. Curl me maybe, skipped by Rich Gray. The Alex, the vice is Alex Boyce. Second is Brandon Tremino. And the lead is Amanda Zranchev. I apologize if I botched that pronunciation. Uh, in that game, curl me maybe has the red stones. I gotta say, I'm cheering for yellow in that one, considering one of them is rocking the classic Steve Eiserman jersey. Oh, indeed, very, 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 very true. And over on sheet D, we have from Pittsburgh, Team Zavinsky, John Vizinski, Sean Mazursky, Katrin Drombowski, and lead Teresa Walker with the Yellowstones against, sorry, the name of the tournament, Kylo Ren and the Storm Curlers. Uh, representing the Potomac Curling Club, also the Central Cur the Curling Club of Central Virginia, and I believe LICC, Long the Island. Long Island Curling Club. Uh, Jen Fox, Alex Carroll, Susan Peterson, and Mandy Marone. Um, they have the red stones over there, and they're working their way through the first end. All these games just began, so uh, no score in any of them as of yet. We're working our way through the first stone. So while I was talking my way through, What's all happened over here on our on our feature game? Looks like yellow's sitting one right now. Okay. Yep, yellow's got a stone over on the right side of the eight okay. foot. Red does have a biter over on the twelve foot on the other side. That could be interesting. We are still in second rocks, second stones. Yes, looks like it. So this should be Andrew Shar from the Mean Curls team. And with the uh, wearing a t-shirt, you can't sweep with us. I'd say Mean Curls is about right. That's probably true. A little bit of a slip coming out of the hack on his delivery. He's going for an upweight hit. Spinning quite a bit. There's a lot of positive rotation on that stone. Pretty, looks like it's got to make the hit, but it's 
might skid out of play after the hit. No, it sticks around. It's a good shot. So they have two stones in the house. Splitting just behind the tee line on both sides out to 12 foot. And again, for those of you just joining us, George Shirk's team has the yellow stones and they also have the hammer in this first act. Actually, we were told they do, but... Yeah, they do. They just they have, do. Yeah, yeah, they just have an updated scoreboard. Okay. Uh, also, for those of you joining, around, joining along, uh, we see we have uh, 30 or so people out there on the stream. Feel free to type chats in the uh, chat box on the live stream telecast. We'll be sure to answer those questions through the game as best we can. And whether it be anything about this particular teams, curling in general, the Potomac Curling Club, the weather, why I'm talking so much, whatever, it's all good. Adam Knapp makes his takeout shot there. For Team and Shirk. Sticks and lays, sticks and is currently laying shot. I'm sure this has been mentioned on other uh, previous webcasts, but this is uh, the first year in recorded history, or recent memory anyway, in which the cherry blossoms are actually out during the cherry blossom bond spiel. Yeah, and my allergies are telling me about that. Something fierce. <laughs> Team Hollywood looks like they were asked uh, asked their vice to draw behind the fairly large phalanx of stones on the center line. There's about four stones guarding the center line right now. They were asking him to draw around it. It looks to me heavy. Yeah, it looks like it might be going through. Yep, and it does. Yeah, a little heavy for George Shirk. All right, what's George Shirk asking his vice, Jason Fontaine, to do? What do we get? He's asking him for a T-line. I think he wants him to freeze on that red stone over in the side of the 12, based on that line and that curl. Bonus points to Jason for having a T-shirt featuring a dinosaur eating people. Hey. It's a dinosaur eat person world. Okay, George wants that to curl a little bit because he was looking for the freeze. I don't think it's going to get it over his handle for that. Well, not frozen, but it is inside, so Shirk is currently sitting 1-2. Stone's pretty exposed, though, and not protected by the freeze. It's probably not long for this world, and that looks exactly like what's being called. Well, maybe not. We do have both skips mic'd for this, so um, at least I believe we do. So let's see if we can listen in and... Looks like they're sweeping for weight at this point. It's a little light. Definitely. Ken appears to be fairly quiet. One of those quiet skips. George generally is also, although by no means always. <laughs> so, he is except when he isn't. Yeah. Trust me, we'll know. We really don't even have to have him mic'd to hear him when he gets loud. We don't need it except when we do need it. This problem. Oh, you got it there. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. You, can, you can turn it a little if you want. Looks like this is sliding a little outside. I don't know that it's going to get back. And uh, now nah. that's going to go straight through. Too heavy. The ice seems like it's a little bit slow here, or not slow, straight here in the first end. Mm -hmm. So neither team's getting a ton of curl out of their action. And we're coming down to the skip stones now. So this will be Ken Dethloff's first opportunity of the game to, to make an impact. He is currently sitting shot. The shot is wide open exposed. But on the other hand, um, Kirk's team just missed. So. Right. Well, they are not giving very much ice because as we mentioned, it's running pretty straight right now. Yeah. He's talking, but I'm not getting anything off his mic, so maybe it may be malfunctioning, or he may have may not, may not turned it on accidentally. Looks like he's calling a tighter line draw behind that cover. 
you said there's three stones just in front of the house, and the way that they're arranged, they're not coming out. So, Braun behind them is probably a fairly safe play. Even this shot at draw weight is not wow. coming back. It's actually going to tap his red. Tapped it in. Actually, that's that's perfectly viable. Yeah, I don't think that's what they wanted to do, but, but it works. As Plan B's go, that's not bad. That's perfectly fine. Um, it did kind of over move a little bit. It is exposed now over on the left, only about a quarter of the stone or so. And the shooter rolled over to the 12 foot. Based on what I see on our camera angle, it is not the second shot. Shirts Yellowstone appears like it's biting a chunk of the eight foot, so it's probably second shot. Um, That's close though. It is, it is close. Looks like he's calling for about a two foot of curl on whatever he's throwing. Possibly a tap to that red. But really, if he just taps that red back about, a, about 14, 15 inches, short six two. Shirk's first stone on the way. Not a lot of people. Sweeper's not touching it at all. Oh, there they go. It's not, it's not coming at all. No, nope. so they're just dragging it for length at this point. And it's close. Probably shot but more or less completely exposed. Um, there is actually a danger on a hit here for um, Ken Dethloff. If he were to hit this on the outside rather than straight back around the inside, he could accidentally direct wreck, wreck it back on his red and potentially leave a big, big first end for George Shirk. That's true. And with this ice being something of a mystery here in the first end, it's definitely a risk. Yes. It looks like that's what he's going to go for, though. Yep. Looks like he's trying to take out that yellow George shirt, stone George shirt just delivered. And if I saw the, the vice, um, Justin Stachnik motioning as though they're hoping to roll into the center behind the cover, which makes sense. Sweepers are on this really hard right, away. right off the get go. Oh, I think I see why. It looks like they're going to wreck on the guards wreck, up yeah. top. Possibly some promote might happen. Not enough to make a difference. Because the three stones, they multiple collision. Physics okay. was not on their Physics side. Physics was not on their side. So George Shirk is probably lying one. Likely also has the third. And that second shot is now exposed to a hit from the center line. Right, it's pretty open. I think yeah. he can get this one. Yeah, it looks like that's pretty much what he's calling for. Although, in my opinion, wow, he's given that a lot of a lot of line. Yeah, especially as straight as it's been running. That's what I'm saying. I agree with you. I completely agree with you, James. But I think George has more curling experience than both of us combined. That so. is a true statement. <laughs> so, and George, we trust. George, we trust all others pay cash. It's Vice Jason Fontaine. He's got the broom. He's got the broom basically just to our right of the center line. The, the right, as you see it on the on the picture as well. Um, looks like he's calling for about 18 inches to two feet of curl. All he really wants to do is just get to that red and just tap it the slightest little bit. Okay, sweepers are on it crazy fast. I just built. And then they change their mind. They're not past the guard. Oh, that's gonna be close. No. Nope. And tap. Oh, this could. Hmm. I think it's yellow one after all those shenanigans, but I'm not 100% certain. I think you're right. Places are taking a look at the three stones. Now they're only looking at two. So it's a question of who got the one. Did George take the one with the hammer or did Red steal it? And 
we have measured. It's pretty close. It's, cl it's, it's, it's close enough to measure. Measuring. It's close enough to measure, no question. So that gives us an opportunity to see what happened on other sheets while we have the delay for the measurement. Uh, sheet C just finished there, and sheet D has also. Um, one yellow. Over on sheet D, uh, Team Zavinsky took, stole one over Kylo Ren and the Storm Curlers. On sheet C, Curl Me Maybe took their one with the hammer. Rich Gray's team from Potomac and New York City, Brooklyn over uh, Pretzels and Prost from DFW. Sheet A is still, still curling. working their way through the first half. More style points to the curlers, the three curlers on sheet A who appear to be wearing some Viking helmet like hats. One with of them at least horns. has the Viking hat with the horns. Not rec two of them are uh, rocking the skirts. Not a lot of style points on sheet A. Doesn't, doesn't actually qualify as a kilt because there's no tartan pattern, or if there is, I just can't see it because they're at the far end of the ice. That's also possible. Apparently, we have the Colgate curling team curling on sheet C. Three of them wearing the Colgate jackets. Indeed. And that's actually the Curl Me Maybe team. Is Colgate from New York City? Is Colgate in New York City? I don't know where Colgate College is. I feel like I should know these things. I don't think it's far. So the measurement is currently ongoing. They're, they've just identified, the, they're using the redstone for the default. And, oh yeah, that's pretty obviously yellow. I can, I can even tell it from here. Yep, yellow takes their one, George Shirk. Uh, held to one in the first end after the massive shenanigans. So they're up one nothing after one. For those of you wondering, Colgate University is in Hamilton, New York, which is closer to Syracuse uh, than it is to New York City. But same general area. Okay. Well, and by same general area, you mean same state. Yes. Because New York City and Syracuse have, like, nothing in common. I know. Okay. My wife is from Syracuse. I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that. I lived in Liverpool as a kid, just the other side of Lake Onondaga. So, yeah, I understand. Okay. Bill McDonald getting ready to throw the first stone here in the second end. George Shirk asking for... A center line, no, actually George saying it should come in the house. That's always an interesting strategy to see how uh, how well the other team's front end can throw takeouts. Although it looks to me as though Bill has left this more as a corner guard, tight three, the sweepers are on it hard. Oh, actually he might get it there, they did get yep. it there, wow. Full 12, good sweeping. <laughs> and that stone curled uh, three feet. So it looks like there's a little bit more spin, a little bit more movement coming, coming, coming home than there was going out in the first half. Um, oh, Deathloff appears that he was just confused by our uh, dehumidifying tubes <laughs> expanding. So for those of you listening in from uh, from elsewhere, our our club here we have a, a uh, large desic dehumidifier that blows very dry air into our shed which is awesome, but we have these two tubes that run the whole length of the ice shed. When there's not actively air, they deflate. And when air's being pushed out, they do inflate. And they make, if you're on the ice when that happens, it makes a very, it's like unwrapping a right. plastic wrap or something kind of noise. It's very disconcerting for a new curler um, to the situation. Possibly so disconcerting that Megan Choi just threw her, Chewy rather, threw her uh, lead stone clear to through the, the rings. So now George is asking Bill to put a guard up in front. Uh, and Shide has completed their first inning. We're here for a curl time from Dallas-Fort Worth with the Redstones, Carol Hotra's team. Uh, took one with the hammer to go up 1-0 over Team Temple from Pittsburgh. In that case, Temple, the person, not the university, as Jack, <laughs> Jackie Temple is the skin. Thank you for clarifying. Looks like that stone was a little heavier than anticipated, so it kind of 
came in and kind of did a split kiss, death lock. Appears to be asking for everything to go bye bye. Right. She's gonna have to put some weight on see this how, one. See, see how what Megan what Megan has on this. It's set up for it if she has, if she can if she can hit the line with the weight. Well, it looks like it's outside. Oh wow! Is she that outside? She pushed it out right yeah, at the she end. Did. That's not gonna come back. I'm gonna guess she's a newer curler because that looks like a typical. Oh, I'm being asked to throw a, throw a heavyweight shot that's a little off the center line, yeah. overcompensated on the push, corrected with the arm, and there you go. So I think that's probably a fair assessment. Yeah. So let's see what George Shirk does with that uh, unexpected break. He's asking uh, Adam Adam Knapp his second to kind of basically guard against exactly what the Hollywood just happened, team just tried right. to call. like Adam Stone was delivered pretty close to line. Yes, Bill. Sweepers, yes, Bill. Are, okay. George uh, is evidently, has yes, evidently Bill. adopted the directional sweeping. Directional sweeping, yes, I, I noticed that too. It just did not move as much as he was hoping. Well, it's still guarding the main rock. True, although it is actually exposed from, uh, from the right. The right, and looks like they're going to take a second shot at the uh, double takeout from, uh, again, the Mean Curls from the Hollywood Curling Club. It's now, however, going to be the second Andrew Shar taking that shot. And it looks like the skip's not expecting any spin on this at all because he's calling for an intern from the inside of the target stone. And my initial impression is, yeah, that's about right. Doesn't seem to be curling a whole lot. Yeah. But he'll get the one. Oh, but it spins. It does not. He does. He gets it a little too thick to come across and tap the second. I'm not even 100% sure he was trying for it. But yeah. It I think if it like happened, he would have liked it. But right. I don't think I he was upset by it. I think he would have had to throw in more weight to really yeah. take a serious shot at the double. So Shirk still lying one, but without the hammer. Asking uh, Adam Knapp to guard it up. Looks a little heavy, for, in my opinion. It's more likely to be a draw in the house. Bill McDonald indicating he thinks it's going to go through. And yeah, Bill's right. Bill is absolutely correct as Ken Deathloff takes it clean through. Oh, I just noticed the Hollywood Curling Club logo is actually based off of the sign. You kind of tell because the letters are it's that font and everything. Well played. Use what you know, I guess. Exactly. I gotta appreciate the fact they're willing to fly all the way out be coast to coast. Yeah, that's to impressive. The tournament. And actually, a couple of the other teams this draw are from Dallas, so you know we've got a nation nationwide uh, attendance here at the. Oh, whoa! We got a little bit of an accident down there. Uh, burn the stone. Uh, she looks like she's okay, so that's Everybody's the, okay. the main thing. Uh, actually, they didn't do that correctly because it was past the T-line, or past the hog line. Once the stone's past the hog line, even if you're burning, you're supposed to let it finish. Oh. And it's the opposing skip's choice. But, you know, that's a that's a misdemeanor, not a felony. No big deal. George isn't raising a big fuss about it or anything. I know George knows that rule. So. Right. Okay. More important thing, everybody's okay, and we're carrying it. I think Ella Rock has nine lives, though. I think it survived yeah, right. well, that, that, multiple they, takeouts that's, now. That stone has been, they've, they've thrown three at it that I can yes, testify Bill. to. Yes, yes, Bill. Yeah, it looks like it's a little heavy. Yeah, Maybe a it might actually get taken out up, by yeah. his own stone. Because uh, it didn't, no, okay, it just gets promoted tap back up. to the back 12. Yeah, yeah. And Shirk sure, currently sitting two. One half in the eight foot, the other full in the twelve. They could try to go for the double here if they hit the the top one thin. And that's okay. Uh, Deathloff basically gave a sign for every single possible weight. 
<laughs> on that stone because he called for a heavyweight takeout, he called for a board, he called for a hack. I don't know what weight that's going to be. Choose your weight. Choose your own weight. Uh, in my opinion, it's coming at about board, actually, more than that. Yeah, I think it'll get the back one. No, uh, nope, it's, it's coming over. It's going to tap the front one. Oh, it's yeah. a it. Oh. Well, it got them both moving, but it just moved Shirk's uh, stone with nine lives over to the other side yeah. of the house. It got the back one, though. The back one did go up. Actually, the back one was stone with nine lives, wasn't it? So promoted with the last one. That's so. a good point. I lost track of it. Yeah. So Shirk's still lying one. Now on the other side of the sheet. So looks like he's asking uh, Jason to either guard or curl in behind, depending upon how how much cut he gets. Sweepers are sweeping hard. Right, hard. Nothing directional about this. This is just about dragging the stone further. It's got to be a very high guard if it even gets over. Right, it's over. It's, over. it's over and it, ooh, it overspun a little. So I think the stone that's in the forefoot is exposed on the outside. The, the left hand is, uh, from our point of view, uh, Right hand from the uh, from the webcam. camera on the webcast here on the second end. Although it looks like he's going to try to peel the guards. Yep, that's the safe call. But it's the safe call. Mostly can because he has the hammer. So right. If he can get both of them here, that would be that's a good call. Yep. Coming with a lot of weight. Coming with a lot of weight. Coming from the inside out. Deathlaw says it has to come over a little bit. And nope, just grabs the back one. Shooter rolls out also. Basically, back the back of the two guards was peeled. But that's not actually the stone that was guarding the nope. shot stone. So Shirk going on offense, trying to take the steal here. He's talking to uh, Jason about putting a stone in the top eight behind the cover. Basically saying to uh, Deathlock, ah, go ahead, try to make a double. Right. George asking this stone to curl not quite four feet, about three, three and a half. Okay. Yeah, this is what happens when you have a team that's not in the normal East Coast rotation come in. George probably doesn't know quite what their style is and maybe trying to feel them out a little bit, see where their strengths and weaknesses are. And, you know, George probably also contending with the fact when the skip's got a uniform, he must know what he's doing, <laughs> which is not always true. Right. I actually had a uniform one year, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Probably helps when you're in Hollywood and there's people who can sponsor you. Yeah. Hollywood, Hollywood curling brought to you by... Uh, Fusion, apparently. <laughs> from Steven the, Spielberg. Judging from the logo underneath the collar. You actually joke about that, but actually the Hollywood Curling Club every year hosts a uh, bond spiel that um, is very you know, movie industry themed and they have a charity auction that gets a lot of movie memorabilia and that kind of stuff. And that auction raises a bunch of money for charity. And George's Stone I think it's out. goes yep, just barely through the house. Looked for a second as though it might have hung around to be a trip hazard, but they took it out. I think as much as anything, because Deathlock didn't want to deal with it. Um, oh, Deathlock rocking the new, uh, the stylish new uh, Kickstarter uh, multi-pad curling shoes with the little I discs. I noticed that. Shirk's actually rocking those too. <laughs> so both of these skips going with the high tech equipment. Over on sheet C, Red's getting ready to throw their last stone of the end. And uh, potentially in a world of hurt as there are three yellows in the forefoot. And there's a red wall behind it to guard as kind of a Chinese wall sort of situation. And that could be uh, that could be an interesting situation over there on C. So. Red st stone here on B looks a little hot. A little hot. It's outside the line. Jason's getting ready to sweep this Jason's one. Jason's getting ready to pull it back. 
got to pull it back at least into the eight, maybe even into the 12, just barely. So Sherp still lying at one. George insisting he can get that much curl. Okay, so George is, George is once again gonna try to do the draw in. And he also has the red for back, of course it comes to worse. Okay, so red over on C was able to do a tap promote. He has his stone under currently sitting. Yeah, currently sitting a shot on the button. Uh, yellow's got a couple others. It's actually, he actually may have escaped, may have found the one shot that actually gets him out of that situation. So well done on that, well done over there. George Shirk getting ready to throw his last stone of the end here on our feature sheet, GP. to say not only is the Steve Eiserman shirt uh, rocking, but the uh, sawtooth hat yes. from the Vice over there. Uh, Adam, Adam, Adam. I want to say that's Ryan Bieber, but I'm not 100% certain. Someone okay. with good taste in hockey. Anyway. Yes. Okay, George's draw coming in. It's not going to get all the way behind the guard, but it may freeze, freeze on that to the red stone one. in the back, which is really just as good. So, yep. Shirk sitting 1-2. Basically forcing uh, Ken Dethloff to do a draw to take his one. And he pretty much needs to be well into the forefoot. Touch of the button, basically. Yep. To escape with his one. In the game. So that's actually kind of a victory for George. I think so. I think that's about the best George could hope for. Also, particularly given this team has uh, bombed a couple draws already this end. It's completely possible. Oh, well executed over on C. The uh, yellow team followed that nice red stone with a tap. I think yellow got two out of that once they, hang, once they hang the score. Here comes the draw. It's yeah. gonna probably th freeze to the yellow one. Which is fine, that, that should that gets them what they need. Actually, does it? No, it doesn't. Oh. It does not. That's too bad. Too bad for Yellow, Hollywood. George Shirk steals one. The uh, stone by Kevin Ken Deathloff rather was just a tad too hot, and it went through. So George Shirk goes up two nothing after two. This is the point in the spiel that I usually find it's tough to tell what you want to do because if you lose, you're out, which nobody wants to do. But if you keep winning, you're going to have like several games back to back, and especially if you're a front end player, that means tired arms it's by tired the end arms. of the day. Yeah, these guys actually half of the teams that are on the ice right now will actually be coming back in what is actually the next game, although there is a break before it. Um, because after this game, there's going to be about an hour and a half long um, break for uh, the ice to be re-scraped and dinner. But then there'll be another game at like 7.15 that two of these four teams will be playing in. I don't remember which two. I didn't, I didn't see exactly. First shot here for Bill McDonald. Looks like it might make it into the house. Yep. Oh, T line. Yeah, actually, back at T yeah, line. Back four. Back eight. Back four. Okay. So all of our games are in the third end. Uh, we know on sheet C, Pretzels and Proust. Roast rather, I'm sorry. Uh, from Dallas Fort Worth, took their one to tie up their game against Curly Maybe, Potomac, Brooklyn, and New York City. So it was a one, not a two, but that's okay. Uh, we don't have scores hung on sheet either, either sheet A or sheet D, so I don't know what happened there. Mean Curl's first stone guards up the center line, which yeah. is an interesting play. Very tight center guard. Yeah, which is an interesting play for a team with the hammer. Um, right. <laughs> The book would say horrible idea, but the book at this level of curling is written right. in crayon and they don't even <laughs> color with inside, inside the pencil lines. pencil so it can be yeah. erased. Exactly. It's more like guard weight from Bill McDonald this time. 
Sweeper's on it, though. And I gotta say, it looks like a little cur a curl is developing here in the third end. That stone's moving a lot more Definitely than the same shot would have back in the first end. So it actually overcurled, I think, from George Shirk's perspective. Plan B, it guarded against the promote. True. Looks a little heavy. I might be able to get to that, that shot, Rock. Yeah, they're sweeping it like they want it to stay straight. Yeah, yeah, it's question is it's gonna get past the guard. And it and is. It did, and it's gonna tap. It's actually gonna stick the foot. It good did shot. not hit with enough weight to take it out, and they didn't necessarily want to, so that's okay. Yeah, that's a good shot. And George is basically saying, you know, that was a great idea. I think I'll do it too. Yep. But we'll say no more. Asking Adam Knapp to uh, basically carbon copy. That's not a jersey you see very much around here. The Team California shirt from Adam there. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, Andrew. First time was Adam. Or Adam. 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 And George throwing the directional sweeping on there because he wants the belt that wants the curl to develop. Yep, looks yep, like yep. it's coming. Looks like, yep, looks like a carbon copy of the last stone. So let's see, is uh, Ken gonna follow it? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Plus, he knows what he knows how to throw this stone. They just did. Right. Developing a groove in the ice at this point. Yeah, that could be an issue, but it is what it is. Fairly positive spin on the stone. Yeah, they got a lot of curl. But it's, it's outside. Yeah, it's well outside the line. It's also heavy, I think. I don't think this one's coming back. I think this one's going to go through the house. Yep, that's a. Uh, Actually, it's going to get rubbed nope. out up. Yep, just through. Yep. That's a flash. For a second, I thought it was going to rub off that back yellow and then shenanigans, but nope. Went to clear it through. George is now saying, you know, now's a good time to guard. So Adam Tapp throwing his second second stone. Believe looks it's gonna have to curl. It's gonna curl a ton. And yep, let's put the brooms on it to make the curl happen. It is developing now, it's coming. That's a good shot. Good guard. Yep. a little crazy to see the directional sweeping starting to sneak into the club level game. Right. So you can tell which teams have spent some time working on it, which teams haven't quite got there yet. I'm kind of guessing that next season we'll probably see a lot more teams at least playing with it. Because it's definitely it's the next big thing. It's, it's the next, it is the next wave. All right, so that was the First stone from Justin Stachnik. And, and it looks like it's a flash. Flash through. Yep. Seems like the Mean Curls team from Hollywood is just not adjusting to the speed of Potomac ice. Yep. Um, and the Potomac team certainly has a, a bit of a home court advantage here. Oh, yeah. Knowing Absolutely. the ice a lot better. Absolutely. Up to 39 people with us right now, so wow. we're slowly building on a beautiful on a beautiful Saturday afternoon while the cherry blossoms are out. I'm a little concerned, actually, truthfully. <laughs> but Jason Font throwing his first. Uh, looks like it's gonna flash too. Actually, is this his second? Yeah, uh, his first. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's slowing down. If it bites a little, it might stick. 
Yeah, it's on the outside, so that might happen. It's gonna actually, it's gonna yeah. come in and it spoke too soon. Yep, it got there. It's it's in the back four, completely exposed. Looks like uh, Hollywood team is going for the takeout here. Just have to make sure it hits it square enough that it doesn't cause the jam in the back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, Collins. Whoa. Uh, I think I might weak on the guard though. I can't tell. Bill McDonald's standing between me and the stones. Nope, nope, it made it. Nope, it uh, did hit heard, the guard. I heard a tap. It yep. did hit the it guard. It did hit the guard and it angles harmlessly out of play off to the off to the right. George calling for a guard. It's in the 12 foot. And he's right, even no. okay if it's short. A guard he's, guard. He's, he's, he's saying, he's just saying, don't be heavy. That's George, that's that's Shirk for don't overthrow this. <laughs> yeah, Jason plays with George off enough. He knows that. Yeah. So the likelihood of this stone being heavy is pretty yes, slim. Yes. In fact, has both sweepers on it hard because he needs some length. He's also wanting it to come back, and here it comes back. Bending back very nicely. That is pretty much exactly, well, it's a little deeper than George called for, actually. But that's, that should be that's third, not horrible. It is third shot. Third shot right now. Yeah. Not exactly what George asked for, but really it works. Because you can't get, to, it, it, it buried itself behind the top red guard enough that you're not going to be able to get to the nose to it. Right. And if you chip it on the outside, your shooter's going to roll out, not, not affect the stones in the back. If you go past it and you hit the one that's in the forefoot, your shooter's going to roll out. George is still going to be laying two. All told, it's not a badly placed stone. Not at all. Which is probably why it appears Ken Deathloff is saying it's got to go. He hits us with enough weight, he could get the Backward. other the other four foot stone to go away also. And this is definitely coming with a lot of weight. This is a heavyweight hit, and I oh, looks like it's outside, think he though. pushed it. Yeah. And nope, he manages to tap the one in the back and spin it out of oh. the rings, yep. but still in play. Off of the corner of death where really nothing good has ever happened for a stone in that little corner. <laughs> So George Shirk lying clearly two as we're getting ready to play skip stones here in the third end. All of our games are well advanced in the third end. Actually, all these games are doing a pretty good job of keeping pace here. So that's kind of fun. Forty-five people on the web stream now. George trying to draw in here. Draw in, or is he looking for? Is he looking to guard, to guard up his uh, his riches, so to speak? Um, that's a good question. Where, based on where Bill just tapped his broom, I thought it was a draw, but okay. Uh, guard would also be, I think, an acceptable outcome. Fair enough. George rocking his. Slow, gentle delivery. Yeah, it looks more like a guard to me. It's got to come back, though. Probably will starting about here. The break seems to be late, and he's got Bill. He had Bill emphasize it for a second there. Here comes the hard break. That's fine. Yeah, that's a good shot. That's fine. That stone's, that stone's got that locked down. Pretty much, he's got Ken Deathloff from the, from the Mean Curls team, Hollywood Curling Club. Pondering pinball at this point. Because he has no he has no easy in. Right. 
Yeah, it's pretty well guarded up. There's not an, yeah, you're right, there's not an easy way to get to the center right now. I actually think Adam Cat may have actually curled at the Hollywood Curling That's I saw the logo on the back of his shirt, so I think... Uh, I, actually, I actually recall, I think he actually did a couple of years ago. The season he wasn't, he was here for the first half and then he went on an assignment out there. It may have been out there. Oh. Or he was out there and then he came here the second half. I don't remember, I don't remember how it worked out. But. All right, so Ken Dethloff, judging from the broom position, which is at the edge of the forefoot um, on the left-hand side of the sheet. You gonna try to drive the yellow one back? I think he's, I think he's hitting a lot of granite and seeing what happens. Question is, does he have the control at weight to do this? The release looks nice, everything looks smooth there. Sweepers are not on it, now they are. Should, looks like it's got it's enough force to move whatever it's going to move. That's for sure. Sweepers are up. It hits the stone at the top of the 12. Oh. Taps a lot, but not with enough force to take. Well, one of them spun out to the back of the 12 foot. Shirk is still sitting two. Yep. Just a different two now. It's two over on the uh, right hand side of the sheet. And he also actually opened up a draw lane. Yep. He doesn't have a hammer. Oh, yes, he does, because George stole one last hand. Right. So actually, with the hammer, opening up a draw lane is not the worst thing you can do in that situation. He didn't He didn't make the situation worse. Let's no, put it that way. No, that was, that was actually not badly executed. Could have been better, but what he was facing, honestly, I don't know that it could have been that much better. Okay, Adam's staring at the computer screen trying to figure out the situation. As George comes back, looks like George is calling for either a guard on that um, draw line that just was Ken opened, just up. opened, or he may even be, be, be being greedy and saying, put one in the top eight and be sitting three. Not only does that guard the draw line, it also puts the pressure of you're playing against three. Right. So, so I'll bet you that's what he, he doesn't want to be any deeper than that. No, but if he leaves it short, short as a guard, he's, he's perfectly okay that's with that too. I'm a sure. okay. Yeah. Over on sheet D, uh, Kylo Ren and the Storm Curlers have uh, blitzed the last two ends. They took three in the second, one in the third. They're up four-one over Team Zavinsky from Pittsburgh as they're starting the fourth end. All right, George's guard looks is like a guard. A guard. <laughs> it's a two guard, about, looks like it's a good four or five feet in front of the house. But it's right, it's perfectly on the line, the draw line is shut down. So now it's a situation where Ken's saying, what am I gonna do with this? And I think that's the right call. I mean, up doing? already two and safely having two guarded behind for the steal. I think that's a oh, safe play. Absolutely, giving the other team one with the hammer is not horrible. Stealing is stealing is never a bad thing. Right. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I'm looking at where Ken's got the broom. I have no idea what he's, what he's doing. Is he trying to double promote? Like the, the yellow into the red and then the red up to uh, no, and unfortunately we can't hear, on, I can't hear off his mic. He must not have turned it on this game or something. It, yeah, it must be a double promote. That's the only thing I can think of that it could possibly be. Looks like he's throwing a fair amount of weight here. Okay, he's got the sweepers on it. Looks like he's got it. He's definitely got the top yellow, but I think he's over curled. Yeah, no. he did over curl. So all it's done is all it's done is made the situation worse. George Shirk now has three in the eight foot, sitting one, two, three. 
And you can tell Ken sees that because he's... Yeah, that's one he wants back, I think. Yeah, especially since that was actually the hammer. I thought he had another stone, but I was very wrong. George Shirk steals three to go up 5 nothing here after three ends. But that's the kind of thing that happens. I mean, he had no... He had no good shot. Right. And when you throw a bat, and when you, when you have no good shot, bad things happen. Yeah, you have to go for low percentage shots that give you a you know, fighting chance of getting something, but also could result in a disaster. Yeah. And that's kind of what yeah. happened. I didn't even see a shot that he really had to cut the situation down. Yeah. You know, there was, I didn't even see a shot he had that was like, well, if I do this, it's safe, and he, George only takes one. Right. So that kind of breaks this open, a 5 nothing lead after three. Anything can happen. This is club level curling, but a five run, a five point lead after three ends. George is probably gonna, he's going to keep his foot on the accelerator because he only has that one. He only has that one gear, but he's right. got to be feeling pretty confident about his chances. I think whichever team wins here would like a shorter game since they could potentially be playing again in a couple hours. True statement. Yeah, the extra hour to to let your bones rest. Good guard, good tight guard. Good guard, oh, well, actually, it's a biter. It's, it's, it's a biter, and I don't, I don't, George is okay with that, I think. Because, honestly, Defloff's front end hasn't really proven a hit ability yet. Okay. So. Looks like Hollywood's trying to curl in here, or draw in behind the... Uh, I think it's Possibly over. It's tap. I think it's, it's over curling. Oh wow, is it over curling? Remember a couple ends ago, we were saying this was very straight ice. Those days are long gone. Problem solved. Possibly with extreme prejudice. It has over curled. That's gonna stick around though. Back twelve. Yep. That's not terrible. No. It's probably shot stone curling. Just barely, but probably is. All right, we have a third third end result over on sheet C. Uh, Curl me maybe took a four oh, a lot to break their open to break their game with pretzels roast. Five one after three. Curl me maybe Rich Gray, Alex Boyce, Brandon Torino, and Amanda Zranchev. We do not have a third. Yes, we do. We have a third end score over on sheet A. Yellow uh, team Temple. Jackie Temple's team took one to be up 2-1 over we're here for a curl time from Dallas Fort Worth. A little bit heavy, but I think it's gonna still be shot rock. It's still shot rock, back at the 12 foot, completely behind that top 12. I think George is quite content with the line. He maybe might have liked it a couple feet shorter, but. Team Detloff is trying to peel the guard here. Uh, well, nope, maybe not. No, it's freeze to the guard. I'm not sure why. But uh, it's heavy. Yeah, it is. I think it's going to be too heavy to have the amount of curl he needs. Right. But unfortunately, may, I well, it's coming. It may make it to the back one, though. It's coming. I think it might freeze to the back one. I'm sure George is going to lay a broom to it as soon as it gets to the center line. Just, yeah, he actually chooses not to. And mostly because if he had, it would have been a hard freeze. So George decides to let it be to keep the separation. And he's asking Adam Cap to take it out. Plenty of room to do so. Gives a little push there at the end. Okay, George is asking for Jason to develop some curl on that stone. Looks like it's happening, and got the hit, and just pretty just much nose. Barely though. missed it. Yeah, the other one. That was a good shot. But I think he would have rather had that nose than rolled out. Yeah, so. for sure. Actually, though, where that stone is, double at the back two is quite possible. As Ken Deathloff asks his second, to Andrew Shar to do a hack hack weight hit. I believe the intent is to hit the hit the stone that's just touching the forefoot and drag it back, possibly even taking out the one in the back eight, back 12. Although a hack weight, that seems unlikely. So I think he's really primarily concerned about getting the first one right. and rolling into cover. 
Got the sweepers on it, both sweepers for the length and weight. It's got the hit. It's got a it nose just get back the back one. one. It uh, wrecked on the back one. So now George is saying, okay, let me hit that stone, roll over into the line on the center line. to be going for the hit here. Every time I see those jackets with Colgate curling, I feel like anyone with Crest curling. <laughs> Ultra bright. Uh, it might wreck though. I, don't I think it's a clear miss. Well, okay. To tap it over. Actually, that's... Oh, that's actually really bad because... Deathloff could use that if he kind of lightly, if he kind of Lightly, like back 12 weight, tap that. It tapped that. He could tap George's. Oh yeah, or at least far enough back. Be sitting and potentially be sitting three. Actually, that looks like that's what he's going to try to do. Yeah, and he really he doesn't need to overcook this. Just no, nope. just, just gentle back 12, back line weight. That's plenty for this, for this mission. Well, it looks pretty good. Actually, he's calling for a guard. I don't understand that call. And it's gonna overcurl. Sweeper should have gotten on that because it's gonna might wick off the. Well, it might wick though. off and no, yeah, but it's gonna wick off to. I don't. I don't understand that sequence at all. No, honestly. Down five points. You got to play. I think more aggressive. Than yeah. That. So George is saying, pick it off and roll into the roll into the forefoot. Asking Jason with his first 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 vice stone. It's hanging a little bit, but I think it'll come starting back. to think about coming. Wants Adam to emphasize it. George taking a look at the possibilities. And yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good shot. Pretty good shot as far as George is concerned. Pretty sure he's lying one now. Actually, yeah, I'm absolutely yeah. sure. Um, it is exposed, however. So what Defloff should be doing is not that. Drawing, he's drawing in behind the cover. I guess that's defendable. It's possible that the red on the, the right hand side of as you're seeing it, it might be closer. Uh, I'd be really surprised if it was. But I do point out the, the camera angle is yeah. not it's not exactly per perfect, so uh, that looks like it's gonna probably hit that yellow one. It's gonna come over and uh, it might skinny past the guard. Skinny's past the guard. Is it gonna tick off? Well, now that other red one's certainly closer. Yeah, now he, yeah, that is okay. So at the moment, it appears Defloff is sitting. Is well, there's no question. Defloff is sitting shot. The number two stone might actually be Shirk Stone up in the top twelve. Yeah, that's tough to is. say. The rest of them are pretty close. Yeah, and then there's three more stones that are all fully in the twelve foot, just kind of hanging out in the back of the twelve. I'm not even going to guess as to what's three, four, and five on those. Normal. George Shirk asking Jason Fontaine to to basically move a couple of those reds in the back there. Looks to me as though he's outside the line. I don't think it's going to get there. I might get that very back one though. No. Boom, boom, takes out, takes out the one. But Mean Curls sitting one. Taking a look, he think he might be thinking he may, he might be thinking he's sitting two. He's calling for a guard. So apparently he thinks, apparently he's pretty sure he's sitting too. Yeah. Interesting. Or, yeah, he's calling for a guard, but on the other side now. It's an interesting 
I'm, I'm guessing he's trying to guard that back one, but. Released it fairly gently. Sweepers got on it quickly. They're sweeping it hard for line, hard for length rather, I think. I think it's there. I think it's gonna tap George's. Yeah, they might have overswept that a little bit. So now Shirk is one. Shirk is definitely lying one now. And it's behind that red stone that's just barely in 12. Yeah, admittedly, that, that red stone could take out that yellow stone without any grief at all. Right. Although the question becomes, what does what it hit on its way out? So, I don't know. Now they look to be trying to decide whether they want to take that red one out or try to draw in. I think George has decided to go for the takeout, though. Yeah, and this is the kind of thing that can happen in this draw because this is the first round of the C event. All of these teams are 0-2. Right. A little bit of a surprise to see George's team down here. I don't, I, don't, I don't know exactly what happened. He may have gotten a rough break in early couple of his early games or something. I saw his first game on Thursday night. Yeah, it was a close game, but I think in the end, uh, a couple of bad breaks ended up not going his way. Right. So. But, so sometimes, unfortunately, at this, at, this, at this stage of the spiel, you've got teams with kind of disparate Right. Levels of ability. So, large num large numbers happen, blowouts happen, etc. Yes. That looks a little light. It certainly didn't kill it. That's for sure. Okay. Using the directional sweep techniques, got Bill on, got Bill McDonald on it, which means he's asking for a little bit more curl. It's I think it's going to get there. It's going to at least make contact. I think it'll get there. Yeah, and actually, it's got to be a nice drill nose hit. That's a good so, shot. Yeah, that works perfectly. So Shirk now sitting two, two maybe three, depending on those two. There's two frozen stones in the back of the 12 foot over here on the uh, right hand side. And I can't tell you which one of them's closer. I think the yellow one might be, but. That's really close. That's, yeah, that's that's a guess. There's no actual knowledge there. Look, it looks like Detloff is going to try to, it, it looks like they were considering the freeze, but I think they're leaning towards the draw now, draw in from the left-hand side. Uh, not with only that much ice. With that much ice, they're, they're, hitting, that, yeah, they're hitting that red into that yellow, taking their chances. Hmm. That's interesting, because that didn't look like what they were discussing. Well, but that's not a draw line. No, 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 for sure. That's not enough ice. That is, however, a draw weight stone. There they go. You got to start sweeping that. And it's cutting like mad. I think they're going to try the promote now, which might actually work. It's not going to have enough on it. Yeah. All it did was tap George's stone up, so now yeah. Shirk's lying two, maybe three. There you know. Deathloff does have the hammer, but <laughs> one doesn't help him. Right. Really, at this stage of the game. So, George, and George is, George is trying to figure out how to guard up his second one. And that makes perfect sense. He's just, he's just, he's calling to guard up his second one. Actually, it looks like from what he's asking for, yep, it's gonna actually be a scoring guard. Right. So, it accomplishes two things. One, it guards the stone in the back of the 12, or back eight, back 12, whatever. And it also means that Deathloff will be facing three, maybe four, on what would almost certainly be his final draw. Fourth end is over on sheet D. We do not have a score hung as of yet, however. Um, 
Looks like red through the first stone. I don't actually know that for sure. Both teams have thrown one stone, so I don't know. The other three sheets are all still on the fourth end, though. Uh, red through first, so red either is either a blank fourth end or red red stole one, one of the two. All right, Shirks. It's a little light. Shirks final stone. Who's asking for a draw? He's definitely got nothing more guard. Rather, he's got nothing more than guard weight. It's going to be a two guard. Adam Cap trying like heck to drag it, drag it deeper. Still guards it. It's not a scoring draw, but it is a draw. Yeah, or it is a no, no. more English. It's one guard. It's not a scoring guard. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got a quick comment here on the uh, chat. I can't read it. Hi, who is announcing? I don't know, James. Who's announcing? <laughs> James McCulloch and Ellen McNeil. Both from Potomac. Yes. Okay, we have a uh, the end, fourth end over on sheet C. They moved the rocks before I could see the score of them. I mean, it's still there's still enough room on the left hand side to come around for a draw, but again, it's not, he's not given very much ice at all. So I wonder. If that's what he's trying to do, or if he's trying to... Or if he's doing a heavyweight double yeah. double tap promote thing, which I guess is his only conceivable route. I mean, it's possible if the pinball works out right, he gets he takes two with that. Because if he does it right, the George's stone, George's yellow stone could clip out the yellow one in the back on the way out also. And then if this red is closer, he could take two. Right. It might be his only might be the only only avenue he sees for the slightest possibility of it. He's got the sweepers on it hard. It's coming with a hard line. Looks to me like it's outside yeah, the line it's and making itself further outside as it goes. Now there is a yellow stone out there. There could be shenanigans. No, just it just taps that yellow safely out of play. Shirk definitely has stolen two. two. The question Possibly is, three. has he stolen three? And the vices are discussing it right now. They're taking a real close look at it. They're taking out the two yellows that are obviously there. Well, the good news is they have to measure this one. They're extremely close, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Well, except there's also that one up on the top oh, of the 12 yeah. that they're also considering. Just for you know, as those of you watching along at home, doing these rough measurements with your brooms is a horrible idea because nothing can go well and it can, like, bad things can ensue. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna measure. They're it. gonna grab the measuring stick again. So this is a three stone measurement to determine if Shirk takes a third point. But in any case, Shirk is up at least seven points right now. Yeah, so at pretty, the half. Pretty solidly in the lead. All right, so we know Sheet C has got their third, and our fourth end done. Curl Me Maybe, uh, Rich Gray's rink from Potomac and Brooklyn took, stole one to go up six to one over Pretzels and Proust from Dallas-Fort Worth, Jason Hatra. Uh, on Sheet D in the fourth, Kylo Ren and the Storm Curlers uh, once again, utilize the Death Star tactics to uh, take it to steal two. They're up six-one over uh, the Rebel Alliance, or I mean, Team Zavinsky from Pittsburgh. Uh, Sheet A is still in the fourth end, and the measurement is ongoing currently. They've got a number. Okay, the Yellowstone is definitely closer than that one. So the question is, is it closer than the other one? And no. no. Okay, so two points, sure. Deathloff, Deathloff managed to hold it to a steal of two. Which, as we said, puts Shirk up seven to nothing after four ends. And you can kind of start to see the Mean Curls team kind of thinking that 
they need to they need to throw a hail mary here. They need something big to happen fast. Right. I mean, I think they need to get at least two in this end. Oh, absolutely. Three would be even better. Obviously, three is always better than two, right? In other news, water is wet. <laughs> um. Okay, the Shide has finished their fourth end also. They haven't owned their score. However, yellow threw the first stone, so it was either a blank or a steal. Looks like Bill McDonald put the first one in the house. to be about to your line. A little bit above T, four foot. And Megan Choi's, or Chewy's first stone is going to guard guard the first stone delivered by George Shirk. Delivered by Bill McDonald for George Shirk. George asking Bill to uh, curl his second stone in behind that guard that was just developed. Directional, directional sweeping on the fly. And that stone comes up. It's almost full eight. Almost full eight. <laughs> Megan throwing her second stone of this fifth end. It looks like it's going to slide through the house harmlessly. Yep, the flash. Ooh, big news from Shide. Remember how I was saying I didn't know exactly what happened? A big oh. number got hung. Um, that number was a four, and I don't mean for the fourth end. I mean four points in the fourth end for Team Temple from Pittsburgh. So they go up six to one over We're Here for a Curl Time from Dallas Fort Worth. So at the moment, all four of these games are a little out of hand. Yes. But they are only halfway through. You know, anything can happen at this level of curling. So stay tuned. No lead is ever safe. No, no lead is ever safe. I have given up larger, larger leads than any of these. In less ends. I know. I was there. Yes, I know. <laughs> thank you for the, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> all right, listen, you should thank me for reminding you. I apologize. There'll be a drink later so we can, so we can forget. <laughs> so is Team Hollywood going to try to drive this yellow one back? Is that the plan? Uh, probably. Yeah, it must be, because it's, it's calling Not for... Not a lot of ice. But the, despite the intern, the stone's falling off. I don't know if that was if there's a fall in the ice or if that was a delivery mechanic problem. He might have pushed it. But, yeah, that stone kept... Had, it had the curl to cut to the right, but it kept going to the left. So either he had a bad release mechanic or something's, go, something's gone horribly wrong with that ice. Oh, and nope, no big deal. Okay. Somebody fell over on sheet A, but just a slightly wounded ego. Uh, George asking Adam Cap to curl in from our right to our left. 
Um, probably in behind the guards, top 12, top eight weights, the ideal question. I think he was inside the line, but they've got the sweeping on it. Might look Might like, get a wick there off that red Yeah, line. actually it's gonna wreck that top guard pretty solid. Let's see what happens with it. Well, edited up okay from yellow's Kinda perspective. Kind of splits it over. Yeah, honestly, it just makes him do a better card. <laughs> Curl's second, Andrew Shar being asked to uh, throw some weight and move some granite. Open things up a little bit. Open things up a lot, because basically he's calling to remove both stones. Okay, that was a definite better release mechanic. That stone looks like it's doing what it's being asked to do. It's gonna hit the, it's gonna hit the top stone with some force. And we'll clear things out. Clear things out. Yeah, Although definitely, definitely made the stuff in the rings accessible. Fortunately, knocked another one of George's into the, into the circles, though. Yeah. But so Shirk is laying three and saying, hmm, guard, must guard, much guard. The dinosaur on Jason's shirt still eating people. Well. It's kind of appropriate, actually, for the way this game's been going. Some days you're the dinosaur, some days you're the Neanderthal. <laughs> but when you're in the Neanderthal, you get free beer, so everybody wins. True, true, true. It looks to be hanging a little bit. Like a it little also bit looks to be a little heavy. I think it's going to tap. No, I guess not. Optical illusion. It's a three guard right in front of the phalanx of stones. Phalanx, the word for the day is phalanx. <laughs> and actually, I guess it's more of an echelon because it's got this thing going, right? <laughs> so a wedge, if you will. Yeah. So we've got the flying V formation from Shirk, currently, currently laying three. And at the moment, the mean curls are sitting there looking like I don't remember what the other team from that movie was called. Oh well. It was Iceland in the second one. Yeah. He's just gonna try to throw a lot of weight. Throw a lot of weight and move some stuff. He's almost certainly gonna hit something. Um, unfortunately, what he's gonna hit is the top yellow guard up in front, and that's just gonna result in his stone harmlessly skittering off to the side, tapping a stone that was out in front of the house previously irrelevant to the entire conversation, still irrelevant to the entire conversation. Right. Um, and Shirk is lying three behind protection with an opportunity to make it, to make it even more protected. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that's exactly what he's gonna do. Right, if they had to pick which stone uh, they wanted to hit, that certainly would not have been at the top of the no, list. No, that would have been probably the very last thing on the list, actually. I mean, it's at least gone, so they don't have to deal with it with the next stone. So there is, they got that going for them, which is nice. Silver linings. Jason throwing his first stone, yes, his first stone of this fifth yeah. end. He's being asked for a guard. Bill yeah. is being asked to introduce some pearl and is successfully doing so. The stone's starting to cut now. That's a good shot. It's gonna guard. If it comes over just a little bit further, it'll be perfect. That's pretty good. That's, yeah, it actually snuck into the eight foot. Yeah, it actually, that actually could be used as a uh, offensive weapon by T. Ken Deathlaf right now. Basically has an opportunity to hit and remove two of these four yellow stones in the house. Um, and I'm sure that's exactly what he's asking Justin, Justin to do. Uh, bringing a lot of me, weight. Justin's inside, though. Justin's inside the broom. Over. He's going to hit the top. Of the, he's going to hit the front of the arrow. Let's see what happens on the pinball. Really, all it did was it removed. Yeah, not a whole heck of a lot. 
It, dr it drove the front of the four scoring stones harmlessly through the house. However, it also left what had been a guard as a biter. biting in the house. So Shork is still laying four. The one thing that uh, did improve the situation, it is no longer guarding the other three. So Shirk has to uh, throw another guard up, and it also has eliminated any possibility of the eight ender, which was in, which was actually truthfully in play there for a minute. Shirk, presumably guarding up his uh, his his treasure trove here. D hanging in the fifth end. Um, I got bad news for the Rebel Alliance. Uh, red four, actually red, red eight, just uh, went down in flames. Uh, Kylo Ren and the Stormtroopers are now up eight to one over Team Zavinsky after five ends. George Shirk looking to throw up a guard with his first downs. Got to tell you, it always feels good as a skip to be up. Seven to nothing in the fifth end, throwing guards in the sixth. Yep. Yeah. You're doing that, you're doing something right. Never a bad feeling. Yep. 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 Putting a little bit of extra extra pull on this. Gonna come in, tap promote. Now yellow's laying five. Um Yeah. Ken's gonna have to pull a rabbit out of his hat here. Ken's I don't know if Ken I don't know if Ken has bazooka weight, but he might want to consider it. Yeah, hopefully he brought some of those uh, Hollywood pyrotechnic special effects yeah, with him. Yeah, this would be a good a good opportunity for something for Michael Bay to make a guest appearance and work on this shot. Um, I mean, I know what I would throw. And I'm pretty sure you know what I would throw, <laughs> which would be I'd be coming down the ice saying, here, hold my beer. Yeah. And <laughs> blasting a stone down towards the first front of those four and hoping that lots of it moved. And honestly, based on that broom position, uh, that's pretty much what he's got in mind, too. The good news is there's almost really no way he could make the situation worse. So That's a true statement. He's, and he's probably saying, you know, sometimes... May as well go yeah, for it. Might as well go for it. Coming up weight. Basically, he's looking to hit the front of this diamond of stones and assume that at least a couple of them are going to go bye-bye. Actually, physics is such three of them could if he hits exactly perfectly. Got the first one. Yeah, all that happened is one, and his shooter rolled safely out. Shirk still rolls, still lies four as we're getting ready to throw our last skip stones of the fifth end. Shirk didn't even didn't even blink. He's like guard. Yep, put it back. Uh, we have a score on sheet C. Uh, another steal of two for Pretzels and Prost. Nope, the other No, one. I'm sorry. Curl me maybe. Uh, Rich Gray, Alex Boyce, Brandon Tremino, and Amanda Zranchev to go up eight to one. Also against Pre over Pretzels and Prost, Jason Hatra, et cetera. So C and D are both eight to one games after five. Um, B is a seven to nothing game. B is seven to nothing not after very, four. Certainly not close curling. A sure. is uh, six, six to one, one. after four. <laughs> um, we'll be more than happy to bring you guys some close curling as soon as we have some. Um, and I mean, it happens. It's a bond spiel. Some of the, a lot of these teams are from out of town. They don't know the Potomac ice. It's it's spring. Teams are getting their last bond spiels in before the before the off season in a lot of cases. They're just here to have a good time, and yeah. So George, whether he meant to or not, put another one in the house. So Shirk is now lying five as Ken Dethloff prepares to throw a missile, a missile, a wing. He, he's throwing a bomb. He's throwing a hail mary. He yeah. Has, Really, he's, he'd like to get at least two of these out, I, maybe honest, three. Truthfully, honestly, the smart shot, and he isn't seeing it, um, unfortunately, is he's got the whole draw line from the right to the left, or from the left to the right, rather, to come in and try to put a draw on the button. 
it only gets him one, but anything he's hitting does not get him one at all. So he should be going the other way, but he's down seven nothing. He's looking at Jimmy. So he's he he doesn't see, it, and that's you can't blame him for that. Yeah, and I'm not even saying it'd be an easy draw because actually there's the red card. It would be it'd be a heck of a draw to pull off, but that would be the smart shot. Instead, we're going to see pyrotechnics, and we'll see what the result is. Just throwing high heat down the middle. Uh, it starts sweeping. It looks like it's curling a lot. Tap that. Okay, cuts Shirk down to three, which is a Pyreic victory at, at the most. Um, so Shirk is now up 10 0. Uh, this is not Little League Baseball. There is no mercy rule. So they probably come back on the same. And they got to bring the stones back anyhow, so you might as well throw the sixth. I mean, nobody's got a plane to catch. Well, maybe they do. Well, probably not. They probably have reservations for Sunday after tomorrow. Yeah. So. So our feature game is officially out of hand. Let's Somebody just from, what is that, T, uh, from Dallas Fort Worth appears to be riding their broom like a horsey down the ice. Okay. <laughs> They're also wearing one of those uh, previously mentioned Viking hats too, so. Uh, and I take it back, the person who always likes wearing the skirt that's not actually tartan, now that it's closer, I see. They're rocking the tartan action, it's all good. Everybody's happy. Pretty sure that wasn't what she had in mind. Uh, yellow stole at least one on a, I believe only one, to go up seven to one after five. Yep, that is correct. So, Team Temple? Uh, yes, Team Temple is up seven to one over, we're just here for a curl time from Dallas Fort Worth. Unfortunately, both Dallas Fort Worth teams skipped by a Hotra or Hatra are on the wrong side of um, significant deficits as we approach the sixth end. Well, everything's bigger in Texas, even blowouts. True statement. On the plus side, if all these games after end after six, the uh, ice team is gonna have lots of time to make the scrape go. That is true. Because they could probably flood. <laughs> um, no, but <laughs> nicely executed uh, draw over here on sheet C, threaded the needle past a guard and put some stuff up there, so uh Curl me, maybe sitting in a positive situation in their sixth end. Team um, Shirk appears to be taking out zone guard. <laughs> I believe that's the, the technical Honestly, term for that is the shot the, of shame. Is, is the peel of shame, <laughs> yes. Um, and when you're up 10 nothing, It doesn't hurt quite so much. It doesn't hurt quite so much, yeah. Truthfully, the mission at this point is make sure that the other team can't score a bunch. You're perfectly okay with giving them one or two. It's almost actually, you kind of almost want to. So you get the hammer back? Um, well, no, just because, you know, you kind of feel bad it. winning yeah. winning 11 or 12 to nothing. That's that's true. You don't see many shutouts in curling. No. Very, very early this season, I was on the winning side. Of one. You, feel, you almost feel bad about it because yeah. you don't get ahead 10 or 11 to nothing without... The other team having had some problems, something went horribly wrong for them, just bad shot, not even just bad shots, just unlucky shots, right. stuff just coming up short, just missing or whatever, and bad you're like, breaks. okay, I didn't, I don't feel like, I, I don't I don't feel like the scoreboard really reflects how it went. So you almost, you almost want the other team to get on the board just so you can kind of go, you know, hey, you at least scored a couple at the end. I'm sure calling for the takeout here. Ideally, yeah. you could get both, but I think you'd like to get at least one of them. Adam, sometimes on the heavyweight shots, is not as accurate as he wants to be. I think he's going to get the, the right-hand one. Nope. Uh, he's got, yep, yeah, 
Got the right hand one, put some work on the left hand one, but not enough to get it out of the mix. Team Detloff probably trying to draw in here. So it's only for those of you who may be watching this, they may be interested. There's a huge raffle um, going on here. Bunch of uh, bunch of stuff, including I've seen some very nice alcohols and um, a lot of very nice gift baskets and wall hangings and that sort of thing. So if you want to come down and uh, toss some money in the, uh, in, the, in the bucket for that before the 745 draw, I think they're drawing the raffle prizes at the end of the 745 draw. I'm not 100% certain on that. Speaking of draws, that was a nice draw there by uh, Adam Shower. It's partially behind cover. It looks like George wants to take it out. Does so despite the, the rub. Yeah. Locked out. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about happens to you when you're up 10 nothing. It's like, yep. I wrecked the guard, but the shot worked anyhow. I'm sorry. Uh, Dethoff is sitting shot currently. Yes. So, I mean, you know, he's, he, could, he could put something together here. I'm not sure he could put enough together, but he could put something together. This one looks a little lighter than the last one. It might end up on the yellow one. Yeah, it looks like it's probably going to do a tap promote on that yellow. Kind of a split. Yeah, I think red still ends up here Red's, sitting too. Yep. But they're in, yeah, they're in doubleable territory. And Jason does have that shot in his arsenal. Looks like Georgia is gonna be content to take the first one though. And honestly, he is. I mean, there's no reason to. Looks a little match, Nick. Might be a flash. Trying to draw behind, but I think it's too heavy. Looks like it's just going to glide through. Yep. So George asking uh, Jason to deliver back eight, back four rather, behind the yellow guard. but I think it'll stick around. Yeah, and the curl just never developed. It's kind of basically, it's basically got to be a button draw. Yep, that's pretty close. That's a pretty good button draw. That would have been a really good uh, skip draw. 
Too bad we're not doing the box thing. Yeah, really. So, that would be a pure. That would be. Yep. There would be a box there. Justin Stashnik throwing his last stone of this sixth end. I think the hope is to hit that stone on the button and roll behind the cover over in the edge eight, but it's not heavy enough to do that. Plus freeze, it's called for freeze, okay. But that's not gonna happen either. This is just gonna guard it up top. Shirk sitting one on the back of the button. Defloff does have a stone over there is the number two stone over in the edge eight. Shirk has the three four and the fifth thread stone that's his fifth stone is also in the house red. But George obviously just mainly trying to prevent a prevent a big number. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Safest shot here is what he's calling, just the straight takeout. As long as he doesn't drive right. it straight yeah. back on his own. There is actually a danger there. That's true. And it has been curling a decent amount that way. Yeah. Here it comes. It's fairly up weight. Asking to ask Adam to put some work for on and I'm not sure that was, yeah, okay, it's fine. It's gonna chip out. Whoa, hits him. Watch out. Okay. Almost caused a little bit of problem over on sheet C, not enough, of, it didn't, they were smart reaction, kept that, kept disaster from occurring. So Ken Defloff with his first stone. Is he doing the freeze on it again, or is he? It yeah, looks with that like much, a, with that yeah. much broom, yeah. It pretty ball. much has to. It's the only way to, to really have a prayer of keeping the stone around to be able to do something with hammer. Because honestly, if he doesn't get a three here. It's, I think it's time to shake. Yeah, I mean, even with a three, he's got a tough path, but at least it's, it's considerable. It's possible. He's still, uh, still could get the mythical 10 under. I mean, even an eight would do. Yeah. <laughs> then it would be a game. Actually, if you took the three here, he'd be ahead with an eight. But first, he's got to get the three. And in order to do that, he's pretty much got to get this freeze to go. And actually, this looks... Yeah, it looks pretty good. looks promising. Yeah, a little heavy, maybe. Yeah, it's going to tap it back, but I think the yellow will stick around. Actually, it's not even really all that heavy. It's, yeah. That's... That's a good shot. That's perfectly adequate. No, okay. I mean, there's enough separation that George could just blast it, sacrifice his in the back, and be fine with that. All right, Sheet C has concluded their sixth end and is setting up for a seventh. So I'm guessing that means yellow scored. Yeah. Um, although I actually see red preparing to throw a stone, so maybe they're just taking advantage of the fact it's the last draw before a scrape, they're not holding anybody up, might as well throw. Can't actually force a team to with, to concede until they're mathematically eliminated, and seventh end, you get 16 points possible, so. Actually throwing the seventh end over on sheet D also. George trying to make it difficult for Ken to get his two. He's going to try to corner freeze on his own. That's the hammer, so there's no need to freeze. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, basically he is because that gets him his two. And are we shaking over on sheet A or what's going on? There's some sort of 
consternation. Did somebody fall down? Doesn't look like it. Actually, they're tough. Like maybe somebody. Did. It's unclear what's going on exactly. Some sort of power. So yeah, some sort of kerfuffle going on over on A, and I'm not sure what it is. I almost do wonder if perhaps somebody did fall down. Or was there a discussion? Uh, was it Stonebird or something maybe? I don't know. No, whatever it was seems to be resolved. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Ken Deathloff throwing his hammer stone here in the sixth end. Basically looking to draw to his red on the button, which should get him his two if he pulls it off. Looks kind of promising here, honestly. Yeah. He's got some brooms to it. Over curling, curling might be bit. a risk. They're putting the brooms hard on it. They're probably okay even if they kind of kiss off that yellow and roll in. They didn't. They just get the one. They are on the board, though. They've got one. They are on the board. So the score is 10 to 1 after six. Are they playing on? Are they playing on or are they, they saying appear to be enough playing is on. enough? They are playing on. We're going to seventh because why not? And <laughs> Megan Schul is perhaps a little too excited about this fact, but who can blame her really? Yeah. It's all relative. Usually uh, excessive displays of jubilation are frowned upon in curling, but well, I feel like that's a, a case yeah. where when it's you're down accepted. ten to one and you got one, I you know I don't think anybody's going to give her any grief whatsoever. So neither C or D actually hung their sixth end score. They're both throwing the seventh. I don't know what happened. At this moment, we're kind of in dogs and cats living together. It's 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 massive chaos. Rocks flying everywhere. The bottom line is, in all four games, it appears that one team has pretty firmly established control. And yeah. Short of some sort of meltdown, probably Cur is curl apocalypse. Yeah, right. Giant hole opening up in the sheet, and uh, one team getting sucked under the underworld, something right. like that. Which we actually had that happen over on Sheet D <laughs> earlier this season, I so gonna bring that up, it's possible. Uh, I believe George just told, or yeah, George just told uh, Bill McDonald's to throw through. Sing. I have a nine point lead, there's two ends left. Um, I'm gonna play it very safe now. Right. Because I'm not taking a chance. And that's the correct call. Team Hollywood trying to draw in behind their cover. I think is this the first time the whole game that Shirk has had the hammer? Yes. No, actually that's not true. George had the hammer in the first game. That is true. George took yeah, and he actually got held to one. So actually that was kind of a you know a moral victory for Ken Deathloff back there in the first end. Oh so many oh so many stones ago. They kind of had to feel good about it in that first end because as I recall they actually forced George right. to take that one. It was it was quite quite well done. And then, well, the rest of the game occurred. And Bill McDonald being asked to throw through on a different curl this time. <laughs> Uh, padding is padding his stats for the game. Right. Um, it's an equal opportunity throw through the exactly. house. Exactly. And actually, is he leaving this short? No, he's got it through the house. Okay. So that uh, Bill McDonald throws 100% for the end. 
excellently, ex perfectly executed. Now, presumably, Team Shirk will uh, begin start peeling things. Exactly. Yes, peel a palooza. Because their mission is to keep the other team from scoring more than like four. <laughs> yeah, basically, as long as that happens, I think they're okay. Yeah. yeah it looks like that shot is a little heavy. Yeah, they're sweeping behind the stone at the moment. Um, all three of them sweeping behind the stone in a frantic effort to get it to slow down. Shockingly, it didn't work. Now that would be directional sweeping if you could pull that off. <laughs> Including George. George was one of the three. Yeah, at, at, at that point, I would agree with all the folks who are saying, oh my god, we have to do something about these brooms and sweeping behind the stones. <laughs> And yep, George is asking for the peel game to begin. And I, I think, think he may miss. have missed the first one. Oh. Well, tapped it, but did not remove it. So there's still two guards. So that's actually a fail. That may be Adam Knapp's first fail of the game. If you're going to fail, now is an okay time yeah, to do it. Yeah, up 10 to 1 is probably if you're going to fail. Still, aside from sheet B, no other sheets have hung their six on scores yet, so. Still no updates to give you from the other sheets. Curling, yes. curling has occurred. Yes. There's really nothing else. To do. Actually, one, actually the uh, sheet A is not actually even done with the sixth end yet. Oh, uh, okay. Because of their little powwow earlier. Red is getting ready to throw their hammer. Um, and actually, if they pulled it, if, if they throw, if they do exactly what they're looking to do, they could conceivably take two and actually be in a situation where they actually could be in a game, not right. a close game, but a game. Adam Cap being asked to remove some guardage. Gets the one for sure. The second one moves across, does not get out of play. And nope, red just takes the one over on sheet A. But red does take one to make it seven to two. And presumably, since they're fighting for their for their life in the spawn spiel, they're going to throw the seventh because they're only down five. That's you're fighting for your life. You might as well take shot. Right. They gave up a four. They could take a four. You never know. Anything is possible. Except dribbling a football. Have you ever tried to do that? That's hard. <laughs> Decent promote there by Team Hollywood. Hollywood, the only ones who have stones in play at the moment, and we are in second, or in vice stones. George asking Jason to at least take the top peel, and he's actually, if he, he, he wants to try to take the, the extra current shot stone back behind the cover there. It's a kind of a heck of an ask, but, you know, he's playing with house money at this point, so you might as well. Actually, at the moment, it's wide, and it's falling off. I think that's a clean miss. That is a clean miss. So, uh, Deathloff could be uh, could be putting something together here. I wonder if George was sweeping that on purpose to avoid knocking that red one to the house. Well, no, because he had the directional sweeping going on, so he, he was hoping the curl would develop. And Ken asking Andrew Shar. No, actually, we're on. Yes, he's on his vice now. Uh, Justin Stachnik to come in from the other side behind the guard or promote the guard. That works just as well for him, really. I think that's what's going to end up happening. If it even gets there. I think it will. Oh, nope, it's going to. 
Okay, skittered off. It actually rolled behind the cover over there. The guard, the guard did not quite make the house. Red is sitting two. Still don't know what happened in the sixth end on either sheet C or sheet D, and they're well in the seventh end. In both cases. Jason being asked with his second place? Yeah, yeah, second. To remove some stuff. He removed the guard. He didn't actually hit any of the object stones, so red is still lying too as we go to skip stones here in the seventh end. And Team Hollywood is feeling is is is, is feeling uh, <laughs> feeling their Wheaties a little bit. Yep. Team Hollywood is busted a move. Okay. Which is what you would really expect from a team from Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you should. Honestly, they should break out into a dance number. Maybe right. that's the problem. We need. They need a montage. <laughs> they need a montage. That's what they need right now. Sure, they have enough of the game left to actually make an effective montage. Er, right, but it's worth a shot. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, they have very little to risk at this point. Exactly. So they're trying to kind of do a chip and roll, and they get they okay. almost work. They have the third one on. The fourth one, you know, actually, honestly, I would insist on measuring it because, again, what do you got to lose? And that would actually look good in the montage. Right. You know, the, 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 the biter bar just having it in as they take their four. You know, I can, I, I can see this. I, I, I can storyboard this. It could work. <laughs> and George saying, I'm going to be the big mean ba bad guy from the Cobra Kai. I intend to sweep the leg. And by sweep the leg, I mean take a double takeout of two of the redstones in the house. That name was in the running for our Dykes team this year. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg? Yeah. Should have done it. Should have done that. I would have no. proved. The problem is that most people now who are playing in the Dykes are too young to remember. But they did, they did a remake of the Karate Kid a couple years ago. That's true. So I don't know if, I, I have no idea if Sweep the Leg was involved, but, because honestly I didn't watch it, but I know it existed. So they hung both the sixth and the seventh over on sheet D. Uh, in the sixth, Team Zavinsky attempted to blow up attempted to blow up the Death Star, but uh, they just missed the Womp Rat. So they were down eight to not eight to two, and uh, Kylo Ren and the Stormtroopers did in fact uh, retaliate by basically blowing up Tatooine or whatever, and are now up 11 to two after seven. Um, the game is technically over because they're down by nine, but they're throwing the eighth end stones because, eh, why not? In Pittsburgh's defense, that small thermal exhaust port is only a couple of years wide. That's true. Well played. Good job. <laughs> um, and they actually hung the sixth end over on sheet C as well. Uh, Curl Me maybe put up a two to be up 10 to one over Pretzels and Prost uh, as they're rocking their, way, rocking their way through the seventh end. Meanwhile, back at the base, um, Defloff throwing his final stone of this seventh end, looking, I think, to hit George Shirk's yellow stone in a perfect world, spin in and be laying. Actually, they could be laying four at the end of the stone if everything works out nicely for them. And I'm kind of looking, at, it's possible. If it comes over just a little bit more. I think it's going to hit two square. Nope. But it did it hit it enough to tap the red on. Red is there yellow. They're laying three at least. At least if this gets out of play. I actually think right now red is yellow and red is lying three. They're definitely lying two. That might be a third one that they're on the center line. It's hard, yep. it's hard to be able to be certain from our uh, point of view, but it's possible. 
Presumably George is just going to try to hit something. Uh, actually, I think George is just going to draw it. See, he has hammer. Oh, that's He's true. perfectly content to take one. <laughs> Seventh end is over on sheet C, and I have bad news for Pretzels and Prost. Red's getting ready to throw a stone. So they either scored or it was a blank. Either way, that game's actually mathematically over, too. Ordinarily, it's kind of considered bad form to continue curling after you're mathematically eliminated. But A, these teams came a long way to play. And B, it's a scrape break after this. So they're not holding anything up. George's draw. Is it coming up short? It is. Is it coming up critically short? It came up critically short. They've got at least two. They might have a third. I th think they're thinking about the biter bar to check that third one out. Nope, they, not, they did not think about the biter bar. They kicked the stone, so I don't know if it was a two or a three. At the worst, they're down 10 to three. They might only be down 10 to four. And it was a three. a three, so they're only down 10 to four. It's possible would bet on it, but it's possible. They're alive. They are alive. We actually have somebody here in the warm room holding up a, uh, a sign a, for the team. A blame this skip. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, Mean Curls. So I'm glad to see their fans are so still. They, they've uh, got a fan, and, you know, honestly, truthfully, at this point, they have officially made themselves. This is the closest game of the four on the ice. This is the competitive one. So all Deathloff has to do here is steal six. No big deal. Piece of cake. Doesn't even need to kick the extra point. Two field goals wins. <laughs> Time for an onside kick. An onside kick. Onside kick would be good. Uh, can he call for a power play, perhaps? <laughs> T-line. Like to tap this in and roll. T-line. So George actually asking no, just for a semi-pick shot. And he's not getting what he's, he's not going to get what he wants. Because too light. Bill McDonald's stone over curls and is too light for the job. Taps it over slightly. I don't think it's touching. It's uh, close, but. I, it's, I, it's a shadow. I can't tell. Maybe. I think they're I discussing it. They're discussing it because honestly, George is going to be, if, if it's in, George is taking it out with his next stone. Because George is going to be like, I haven't actually won this game yet. I'm going to do what I got to do to be mean now. Second shot here from Megan. Likely her last stone of the game and likely of the tournament, although, you know, miracles can occur. Looks like it's going to rub off. Well, now it's certainly touching. Now it's certainly touching, and her stone comes up on the T on the button. Actually, it's kind of given George a little bit of a, he's got to figure something out here. He's going to try to double it. Yeah, well, because doubling it guarantees that the worst that can happen is he ties. He only has to get rid of two stones to win the game. Now three. Bill McDonald. Heavyweight. Being asked to throw a much more difficult shot than he was asked to throw last end. <laughs> Where he just had to throw the two through. I don't think this is going to get the double. It is, however, going to take that top one out and... and the shooter is also going to roll out, which is also good because that means that there's nothing to hide behind. George is perfectly okay with that because all he really has to do is get rid of two more stones and this game's over. Yeah. 
Seventh end still in progress over on sheet A. Uh, kind of looks like yellow's in a position to score a lot. <laughs> yep. Because yellow has the yellow has the hammer, and I see a lot of yellow stones in what I feel like is the house. And I don't see any reds in there. They're getting ready to throw. Oh, actually, they got lots of stones left over. They're, they're going slow. They got they still have all the skip stones to come. This is actually their third last stone. Andrew Shar's first stone being put up as a guard. And scoring guard? Not quite a scoring guard. Close enough that it could possibly be ticked on later, so you can't assume that guard, that, that stone's out of, completely out of play. George, however, is looking to put it completely out of play. And if it happens to catch the back one in the back, that makes this game so much over. The better. Adam Cap being asked to deliver what would be the death blow. Not 100% sure this stone's gonna do it though. I hit the back one. It did hit the back one, but not enough to take it out. It just ticks it over. George kind of looking a little bit, what do I got to do to end this game? <laughs> other hand, other hand. I mean, realistically, he's still in a pretty strong yeah, position, yeah, yeah, yeah. but six has happened. Yeah, it's still mathematically possible, but I'm not sure it's much beyond that. Okay. Work with me here. I'm trying to build drama. <laughs> trying to put some gravitas behind this. Ken Deathloff trying to curl behind what is probably his guard up top. I don't think the stone's going to bend enough to get there. It's in the rings. About T deep, actually back four deep, back eight deep, and not behind the cover. That's a problem. George just looking to just hit it. Really hit anything. Yeah, pretty much as long as A stone goes out of play, he's happy. Uh, and at the moment, it's going to be the guard that's going to go out of play. So red is now, they have two stones in the house, four to throw. They have to come up with six. Absolutely, Carol, bring a team down next year. Absolutely, we would love to have you. Have an international audience for this draw. And that and be, indeed we have. Justin Stashnik throwing what may be the last meaningful stone of from uh, the uh, Mean Curls team this game. They have to make all of their remaining stones count. If any if any stone is not scoring at the end of this, it is game. Well, it needs to be at least a biter. And it's, and going it's to be. a biter. It actually also functions as a guard, but it doesn't need to, well, it needs to guard, but all that George has to do is get rid of A stone, any stone. Get one out. George, should we come the other way? Then we can get either the back one or the front one. George asking Jason to deliver the death blow by hitting either the stone in the top 12 or the back eight out of play. Yes, Adam. There's the stones moving, the shooter's moving. It's coming off the line. I don't know what it's gonna do. Is it gonna get enough to take it out? Yes. Yes, it will. That's ball game. That's the game. Deathloff has five stones remaining. They need to score six. They may continue throwing just to throw, but nope, there's the handshake. And that's it. And that's it. Yep, that's officially it. Mean Curls, Ken Deathloff, Justin Stachnik, Andrew Shar, and Megan Schuel. Their tournament comes to an end at the hands of a convincing 10 to four victory by George Shirk, Jason Fontaine, Adam Knapp, and Bill McDonald. So 
that's the end of our feature game here on B. We're going to cut over to A because A is still alive. The game over here on A is between in red. We're here for a curl time. Carol Hunter is the skip. Team Temple from Pittsburgh. Jackie Temple is the skip. The current game situation, it is 7-2 in favor of Team Temple in the seventh end. There's a lot of rocks in play right now. A lot now. of rocks in play. Red's throwing their last stone right now. I honestly don't know what's going on. Um, I can't actually see. It looks like red is sitting one. Is it? I, That's what it looks like from Lots here. of bodies moving around. I can't, oh, we have it, okay, we have it there, yay. Yeah, red is lying one right now. Yellow has the hammer this end. But that red stone that's in there is pretty well protected, really. So red might take their one on the steal. Be down by four. Be down by four going into the eighth. Possibly. And we do still have games curling on sheet C and D, but both of the games have been mathematically over for a while now. They're just throwing stones to throw stones. Um, the teams that won over on D. Kylo, Kylo was, Ren? Was Kylo Jen and the Yeah, Kylo, Ky, Ky, was, was Kylo, where are they, where are they going? Kylo Jen and the Storm Curlers, Jen Fox, Alex Carroll, Susan Peterson, and Mandy Marone. On sheet C, it was the other team in Curl red, Me Curl Me Maybe, Rich Gray, Alex Boyce, Brandon Tomino, and Andrew Zanchev. Those guys will be advancing to a game this evening either at 7.45 or 10.45, depending, no, 9.45 rather, depending. Curl Me Maybe, otherwise known as the Colgate Curling Team. Yes, exactly. Which, as we found out earlier, is not by New York City. But in New York State. It is. <laughs> Team Hollywood getting the... Uh, Team photo. Team photo with sign. I don't know if they realize it says blame the skip. Uh, apparently it does. Apparently they do. They've got good spirits, at least, for a team that did, in fact, go 0-3 and is out of the tournament now. The Mean Curls. Hope to see them again. Hope to see them come back next season, either for uh, Cherry Blossom next year or the inaugural in October, either way. Or not the inaugural anymore, it's now the Embassy Robots Field. Which, as we recently uh, found out, is going to be South Korea themed. South year. Korea themed. Mm, nice. So, anybody who likes kimchi, the Bond Spiel for you. So next year we will have two Asian themed Bond Spiels. Indeed. All right, so, okay, they're done over on sheet C. Just they've thrown all their stones. Yellow did take two, actually yellow took three, um, but it, they were just playing. So that game is officially over. The game on sheet D is getting ready to throw its last stone. Meanwhile, the game on sheet A is only done, is only still working on finishing the seventh end. And Team Temple skip Jackie Temple trying to figure out how to deal with that one red stone that's currently shot. That would be pretty tough to get to it. Yeah. I mean, you could drive one back or something, but I mean, since they're up five at this yeah, point. Yeah, honestly, just draw to the other side of the forefoot. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, just let them take their one and come home up four. I yeah. think that's uh, with or the hammer. Or, or, or draw to take one and be up six without. Thank you very much. We got lots. Yeah, we didn't hear you. We, we, we couldn't hear you at all, actually, well, unfortunately. <laughs> Neither, I don't know if I, I don't know if both of you guys, the batteries are dead or what, we, we couldn't hear either skip. Like That's not on. And here comes the Hammerstone from Team Temple. Sweepers are on it right away. So, their shots on the way. And they, it looks like they got it. Uh, no. I don't actually know. I can't they, actually. Yeah, they did get it. They did get it. Yeah, so yellow's up. Yellow scores at A least lot. four. Five, four. And shaking is going on. 
So Team Temple from Pittsburgh, Jackie Temple, Eric McManus, Robert Sir, and Megan Fay eliminates We're Here for a Curl Time, Carol Hotra, Kate Sumero, Michelle Ford, and Vicki Miller. And that is the end of this, the 2.45 p.m. draw. Next, we have a scrape break, so there's not a game coming up in a few minutes. Join us instead at 7.45 p.m., I believe is the official time. 7.30, 7.45, something. Join us then sometime between 7 and 8, as we'll bring we'll be back with the next draw of the Cherry Blossom. Uh, for our operator, Gene Grosby and James Public, this is Alan Neal, wishing you have a great evening. Enjoy dinner. See you in a few hours. Good Goodbye. Going.